एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल डेंटिस्ट्री टू द पॉइंट दिस इज डॉक्टर ध्रुमिल मानिक एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट अ टॉपिक दैट इज फ्रॉम जनरल जनरल सर्जरी एंड मोर ओवर दिस टॉपिक विच वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी नाउ इज गोइंग टू बी एज एज अ फाइव मार्कर शॉर्ट नोट इट वॉन्ट कम एज अ लॉन्ग आंसर दैट इज इन योर थर्ड ईयर बी डी एस इन द जनरल सर्जरी right moreover sometimes this topic is also asked in a comparison with one more topic that will be the next part of this video that i'll record it as a separate video and put it together okay so right now we'll be sticking on to the discussion of keloid okay keloid is something which is a very most commonly asked questions either in a viva or as a theoretical question or as a five marker short not right so now without wasting much of time let's start about this topic okay and i would advise all of you to watch the video till the end for the better understanding right and moreover if you have any doubts you can just put it in the comment section okay so now starting with keloid first of all what is keloid okay keloid stands for an abnormal or a scar tissue a scar tissue which is abnormal it is not a normal scar tissue it is something different or variant of a scar tissue it is most commonly seen where at the site of injury or incision okay so wherever if the person or he or she has been exposed or has experienced any injury around that area or around any incision you will see this keloid okay moreover when i talk about keloid okay it is not contained or it is not only present at the site of injury in fact it is present around the boundaries of the original injury or the wound so first point what it is keloid is a abnormal scar tissue which is found at the site of injury or incision which is beyond the boundary of the original wound or the injury right now what happens or how does this keloid form or what is the pathophysiology behind the formation of keloid so now we know one basic response which occurs when we are experiencing an injury right so whenever we experience an injury there is always a healing response which is generated by our body our body is going to generate the healing response on to that healing response there will be healing and inflammation and all those things will happen but now when the healing is happening the main component which is contributing in the pathophysiology of keloid is the proliferation of fibroblastic cells there will be fibroblasts which are going to come at the site of injury make collagen and the wound healing happens right but now this is the normal process what i'm saying now this thing is increased when it comes to the formation of keloid in the pathophysiology of the keloid the healing response will be increased a over responsed healing process will be happening which will lead to more amount of proliferation of your fibroblast which in turn will increase the collagen deposition in that area right so there is excessive collagen deposition so ultimately an abnormal scar tissue is there or a injury is there that area there will be a healing response which will be more than the normal required limits which will increase the proliferation of your fibroblast in turn increasing the collagen deposition forming a keloid okay now how does this keloid look it looks like a raised thickened and a irregular mass it will be raised thick and irregular mass so r t i okay raised thickened and irregular mass will be seen in the form of keloid right now what are the different risk factors which are associated firstly genetic factors secondly the people who are having dark skin tones that type of skin is more predisposed or risky for getting affected by this problem age group if i see it is seen in a very younger age group of 10 to 30 years 
and it is seen more prone in the areas of scar tissue so wherever there is scar tissue and other factors when they are predisposing together it can lead to formation of keloid right so as i have already said how does the keloid look it looks like a raised mass which is shiny and appears red or dark okay so suppose if this is the site of injury around that site of injury it will be as a firm raised shiny mass of a red colored tissue around that site of injury okay what will be the symptoms experienced by the patient the patient might have itching tenderness pain and the lesion can be of varied sizes there is no particular size which is seen in commonality with these kind of problems right so itching tenderness pain and sizes will be different so here pit pain itching and tenderness now how are you going to diagnose your keloid right so keloid will be diagnosed clinically and symptomatically clinically means what i explained you how does the lesion look what will be where it will be all those things symptomatically seeing the symptoms of the patient the history of the patient so you cumulatively take the clinical as well as the symptoms together so that the diagnosis is perfect now there are some lesions which look like keloid but they are not keloid that are hypertrophic scar and dermatofibromas these are called as your differential diagnosis when i tell differential diagnosis that means these lesion are somewhere the symptoms the signs are overlapping but there is a very thin line of differentiation seen between keloid and these lesions like hypertrophic scar and dermatofibroma so whenever you are asked what is the differential diagnosis of a keloid you can mention hypertrophic scar and dermato fibromas now when i talk about keloid it is a highly recurrent lesion so it's not that any one treatment option will be sufficient you need to do multiple treatment options thoroughly in a sequential stage so that you get a proper treatment but in 50 to 70% of cases it is going to be recurrent what are the treatment options yes you can have corticosteroid injection so what they are going to do they are going to limit the production of collagen so that the size of the keloid decreases and the symptoms also decreases the discomfort also decreases laser therapy again specific area the blood vessels around the keloids can be targeted the size of the keloid can be decreased with a less surgical trauma when you are using laser so the third one is cryotherapy now when i am saying cryotherapy that means liquid nitrogen will be used nitrogen in liquid form will be used to suppress the size of the lesion we have surgical removal but again it should be in conjunct or in combination with these treatment option only surgical removal won't be sufficient lastly silicon gel and pressure therapy can also be given to decrease the size of your keloid and give a symptomatic relief so overall this is a whole story of keloid let's go back and revise once abnormal scar tissue at the site of injury see you need to remember only the keywords if you have the correct keywords in your mind there is no need to mug up the whole answer okay so beyond the boundary of original wound where the healing response will be increased which will increase the fibroblast proliferation which will increase the collagen deposition it will appear like a raised thickened and an irregular border risks are genetic dark skin 10 to 30 years age and scar tissues right moreover it will look like a raised shiny red color mass around the firm mass around the site of injury the symptoms will be itching tenderness pain and the lesions can be of varied sizes when i say diagnosis you do clinical and symptomatic examination 
and a proper history, differential diagnosis, hypertrophic scar and dermatofibromas, highly recurrent treatment corticosteroid laser, cryo, surgical and silicon gel or pressure therapy, right? So now see how easy it was to understand a one small simple topic, right? So I hope you guys have understood and got the concept thoroughly and you would be able to implement the same on your answer sheets in your exams also right so i hope that okay and if you have still any doubts you can post it in the comment section thank you so much for your valuable time see you in the next video with a fun and a new interesting topic thank you so much goodbye